it had never occurred to me to work in opera and it as soon as I discovered the job it just ticked the boxes about you know my love of singing you know my love of languages and somehow being involved in a much more sociable musical world you're working with singers but also painters and carpenters and costume designers and all these people in a room and it's just such an amazing you know melting pot of, of ideas to be involved in. I'm from a small town in the Scottish Highlands called Nairn. Growing up, uh, we were just encouraged to sing and there's home videos of me singing when I was in primary two and I won the talent show. Um, very embarrassing, but there wasn't as much going on or performance wise, especially classical music. I've got a big sister and I remember I couldn't wait to turn six years old because she was in a choir called the Waverly Singers and I couldn't wait to turn six because that was the cut-off age to start the choir. I'm from Colorado in the US. My mum and my dad were always very eager for my sister and I to go with them to wherever they were going, so concerts or museums. They were just very keen on us doing whatever we wanted to do. Coming into the world as mixed race women, we would have a lot to prove to other people, not necessarily that we needed to, but that other people would expect that of us. I went to a specialist music school in Edinburgh and violin was what I was doing and singing was only ever for fun. And then I remember going to high school and the head of the music school saying, well, why don't you have singing lessons? I realized that I didn't have the same passion for violin as I did with singing. Both my mum and my dad were just very, very encouraging and just said, listen, whatever you want to do, do it. Fling yourself into it, go whole hog, because otherwise there's no point. Make sure you really love it. The first opera I ever saw was in Inverness when Scottish Opera toured up um, and it was the Barber of Seville and I was, yeah, I think I was in my fifth year at school so that was my first opera and so to be working with Scottish Opera now is um, like a full circle. <laughs> I think it takes you know, a huge amount of patience, this kind of weird world of repetitoring. It's a really difficult job, you know, you're trying to kind of coach and you know, offer you know, language points and technique points to singers, you know, but also you're trying to give an impression of what the orchestra do and, and how they feel to a singer. I think it takes an army to be an opera singer. Like I think that we are the product of so many hours of work, but not just from like, from myself but from a whole team of people. So it's really, really challenging, but when you get it right, it's so right, it's so good. And you've got to have something to say, and you've got to obviously have a lot of belief in yourself and a resilience, especially over the past, yeah, the past couple of years, I think has really proven um, how much it takes to have this career in the arts as well. I like to think that I'd be the sort of performer that everyone can see something of themselves in me that they can empathise with, that I can help tell stories that they may know and open their eyes to things they might not see and I feel like a big part of that is just taking as much as you can, as much music as you can, as much theatre as you can to as many places as you can. There's never been a more exciting time to be involved in theatre in a sense, you know, the thirst for what we do actually after 18 months of it disappearing is, you know, it's amazing and it's, yeah, it's a really exciting time to be part of that kind of return of theatre and return of opera. Thank you.